everyone. So I'll be talking about neural networks today. Let's think of this uh, chart and or scatter plot with maybe like differentiating between classifying between a girl and a guy. So if we were to draw a straight line to divide them, it would look something like this maybe. And this is pretty good. Um, and let's think about really how we drew this line. If we go back to our pre-algebra classes, then we were often told to solve for M and B given X and Y. And I want you to remember this because this is what the core of uh, neural training a neural network is, is we want to find the M and B that will give us the correct output given input. So this this dividing line is pretty good, but if you look at it, then we'll see that some got misclassified, where the blue dots are in the red zone and the red dots are in the blue, blue zone. What ideally what we want to divide these blue dots from the red dots is something like that. And this is where neural network is powerful, because they're able to classify nonlinear patterns. There are different types of neural networks. Uh, convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks are very popular today, but today we're going to talk about the very basic vanilla neural network or artificial neural network. And neural networks are loosely based on how the neurons in our brain work. And so maybe let's think about an example of a Grace Hopper student. Based on the number of hours of sleep and the number of hours of study, we want to predict how this Grace Hopper student performs on their checkpoint, which is the predicted test score. So we have two inputs, that hours of sleep, hours of study. So that forms the input layer. And now we have the two circle things. And then we have the output layer, which will be the test score. Anything in between this, we call this the hidden layer. And if you guys have heard of deep learning, what this basically means is that we're stacking a lot of th these hidden layers between the input layer and the output layer. The point of this is that by each la that each layer will extract more complicated features. So if you're doing an image recognition, maybe one layer will recognize the eyes, another layer will recognize the face, the teeth, so on. So this is what the deep learning is doing. It's extracting more and more features to have a higher performance. We're going to stick to one hidden layer today. So now we have this circle thing, so we want to connect them to form this ne uh, network. So look at the gray lines, and we will call them as synapses. And these synapses, think of them, if you're thinking of them in a graph in a computer science sense, they, they are basically graphs that have weighted edges on them. So these edges, so say one edge is 0.3 then what the point of the synapse does is basically it takes any value input, multiplies it, and outputs that multiply value. That's what synapses do. They're pretty simple, right? So next, let's talk about what these circle things are. So the circle things with this squiggly line are called neurons, nodes, perceptrons. There's lots of names for them, but I'm going to call them neurons. What they do is, you can think of them in, in the programming sense as a function. They take an input, perform some function, return an output. Those are what the neurons do. In the neural network sense, what these do is apply an activation function or a nonlinear function. And this is the key to the neural network because this is what allows us to uh, form nonlinear patterns. Without this, then we'll only have these the uh, lines, which are basically uh, multiplying things linearly. Now that we have the components covered, let's talk about how the steps of a training work. So the step one is feed forward propagation. What we're going to do is we're going to take this input and we're going to pass it along this neural network until it reaches the output layer. What we're going to do is first pass it through the uh, gray edges or the synapses. And here we're doing a linear regression, which is a, a fancy term for doing the y equals mx plus b, where we're applying weights and biases, which are the w's and b's. Next, we reach the hidden layer. Based on what these weighted, we take the weighted inputs and apply an activation function on them. Tan h is a hyperbolic tangent function. It's basically a mathematical function that um, forms a nonlinear pattern uh, or does a nonlinear um, does a nonlinear application to the input. Then we pass through them again through the synapses and apply more weights to them. And finally, we reach the output. So now, let's think about this. So the weighted weights and biases are first ran initialized randomly. So 
it's think of it as taking a guess. If you're in a, if you're doing an SAT uh, reading and there's all these vocabularies that you don't know, first you don't know anything. So that's what I'm talking about when we initialize randomly. The neural network has no idea what to really compute, so it's going to take a guess as we take a guess on a test or anything. So that means that it could be off by the correct input. So if we have, and that's what we call the loss or the error. So the loss is basically the, corrected the correct answer or what the student actually got on the test minus the uh, predicted output, which is what the neural network says it's, pr it's predicting. And to do that, so by having that loss, we're going to want to minimize the loss. What that means is that we want to make sure that the predicted output from the neural network is going to closely match the correct output. To do that, what can we adjust in this neural network? Well, we don't want to adjust the inputs values or the output values. Those are predetermined. The things that we are able to adjust are the weights and biases. So what we do is we need to compute the, um, the derivatives of them. And um, I'm going to put this simply that basically the derivative is going to calculate how much, cha how much can we change the weights and biases by. So that, in, and by changing these weights and biases, it's going to also affect the change of the predicted output, and and hence change the predict uh, the loss or the error rate. This is going to be this is a lot of calculus and performing a lot of chain rules, which I won't get into. But the bottom line is we want to we want to know how much we want to change the weights by in order to minimize the loss. So that was a lot. So let's go back. Let's go review the steps. Step one, we make a guess, or the ne neural network makes a guess. Two. We want to figure out how off this guess was by the correct answer. Step three, we want to see how much we need to change this, the weights and biases by. And four, we're going to actually, oh, sorry, I skipped this. But the step four is once we compute how much we need to change by, we're going to actually have to update the weights and, weights and biases. And that's what step four, the gradient descent, means. So going back to this, step one, two, three, and finally, we're going to update it. That's one iteration. We're, step five, we're going to repeat steps one through four until the loss is close to zero. And that's what really training a neural network is about. A neural network will make a guess, it corrects it by its own mistakes, makes a guess again, corrects its own mistakes, corrects, corrects itself, and we, that's what the training is. So I'm going to do a demo now of a very basic neural network, two-layer neural network. And in Python. So first, we're going to import NumPy, and NumPy. <laughs> um, and uh, in JavaScript, think of it as we're importing something like uh, require. And this allows us for us to play around with multidimensional arrays and matrices and perform mathematical functions on them. So then we're going to declare a function, uh, an activation function. Uh, here, we're going to use the sigmoid function. Which basically, um, so first I'll talk about this function. So this derivative equals false is that I'm also using this so that it will, if the derivative is, if the derivative parameter is set to true, it's going to actually do, uh, calculate the derivative of it. But this is needed for in the step three of the backpropagation. But otherwise, it's all going to be set to false, and what it's going to return is it, any number it takes, the sigmoid function will return this. Um, number between a scale of 0 to 1. So for example, I pass a negative 3, it outputs um, uh, something between 0 and 1. I can change this. Again, something a value from 0 to 1. So let's input this data set, um, x and y. So this is pretty arbitrary, but if you want to think about it more in like a practical sense, think of each row as maybe like a Tinder user. And each column is a feature of that user. So maybe this person has black hair, maybe. And the zero one would be like black hair, yes or no. It would be um, tall, yes or no. And it's all those. So columns are features. And each row is this Tinder user. Now, what would the Y be in this sense? So maybe I want this neural network to predict, based on all these, like, all these Tinder users, for guys, whether me, whether I would swipe them left or right. And the y, I set it as the first. So the first two, I s will swipe maybe left. And the second two, I'll swipe them as right, hence the zeros and ones. This is an example. So um, you can think of it any other examples you want. Um, this is a 
random.seed. I won't go into this one, um, but basically it will make sure that each ran it will create random numbers, but it will make sure that each iteration will be the same random numbers, if that makes sense. Um, and then we have the weights. Again, we're going to random initialize them randomly with an average of zero. Uh, so that these are, and we're creating three weights because if you go back here, we have three columns or three features. So each feature needs its own weight. And now this is the training, the actual training part. We're going to go forward. Uh, we're going to go step one. Um, so before that, so for iterate and x range 1,000, this is just a for loop that's going to iterate 10,000 times. Um, and in each iteration, it's going to have the, set the input layer as x. So basically, this is our input of the uh, four, four to Tinder users. Um, we're going to apply the weights on them. So think of them as the edges of the synapse. It's going to pass through that. And then the second, uh, the layer one, is it's going to perform an activation function on that weighted input. Step two, it's going to calculate an error of um, how much off it was by where y is the correct answer, and layer 1 was the guess I made. Step 3 is going to do a backpropagation, and uh, it's going to compute the weight and updates, um, compute, the, compute the derivatives, which is why this second parameter, if you remember, was a derivative, and it's set to true. So we're going to compute the, uh, compute the um, derivative for this. Um, and then finally, for the gradient descent, we're going to update the weights. And then we're going to, so we're going to run through this, and the output after training, we're going to print out each output after training in the print layer one. Um, this might, this computer is slow, so it might take a while, so I'm not going to run it through it, but this is what it will look like if we run through the 10,000 iterations. It's going to print, print through each iteration. So let's go back to the Y. Remember, this is 0011. Again, as I said, the first, since the weights are random, uh, initialized randomly, the guess is all over the place, so it's like zero, zero. Oh, actually, it did pretty well. Um, but it's <laughs> I might have to rerun this again um, because it wasn't like this the other time. But basically, what happens is that each iteration is going to keep on making corrections until it's going to pr it's going to be as close. And this you can actually since it's only four data sets, which is pretty very very small. Like you wouldn't do this for an actual training on neural network. You would have more like thousands of data sets. But basically what it's going to do is after each iteration, the answer is going to keep getting better and better and better to 0 and 1. And so I'm going to go back to this. So to summarize, what we did basically in the demo was that we took, we took an input, put some weights on it, applied a nonlinear function, had the output. And this is what the two-layer neural network is. Some resources um, I recommend is this YouTube channel called Neural Networks Demystified. Um, there's four, four or five parts to it. Um, uh, the code that I referenced is that just now is this, the second link. And then um, if you want to dive more deep into theoretical stuff, um, Ian Lukun, Andre Kaprathi, those two are great resources um, to study more about neural networks. So I hope this inspired you guys, and thanks for listening.